Hi everybody, uh, I'm Tim, and this is Giles Gunnard. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We are doing uh, another episode of Des Play, especially during this period where we're working on Psychonauts and looking at some of the games that really inspired us to make Psychonauts. And uh, I mean, you can't really go closer to the inspiration for pretty much everything. It was kind of like a, one of those, what do you call those, inflection points of, of, of whatever. A everything v. came out of it. A Y. Yeah, like a, a V. Yeah, funnel. exactly, like yeah. a funnel. Yeah. Um, and we were talking to Giles because you were involved in this project. Mm -hmm. I heard made it all by yourself without any help from anybody yeah, yeah. else, uh, on basically. The weekend. I would love to know uh, both how you got involved in it and what your involvement was and what the, kind of the context of like, what was the world like back then? Uh, it was black and white for a start. I am I'm actually super old, so I, I remember. Um, no, we were, uh, what was I doing? I think I just finished Wave Race. Oh, not I Wave Race. Too. No, I'm not joking. Um, yeah. The other one. Uh, What's it called? The other one. Stunt Race Effects, that's it. Okay. Which was a kind of racing game. And you made that where? At EAD. Nintendo. Okay. And I was on the tech team that we were just doing experiments with um, stuff until they were getting the new hardware ready. And the new hardware was being made by SGI. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember that. I was at LucasArts at the time when they had those, because we were doing Shadows right. of the Empire. So there was a, there was a time when... Um, people on the team making shadows couldn't show us anything. And we worked at the same company, mm. but when we went to go see the game, he had to stick his hand in the desk drawer to hold the controller and play the game because they were not allowed to show oh, anyone right. yeah. that controller. Because, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they went not what I'm using here. I'm using the Wii U because for uh, reasons. But they went through lots of iterations to get that. Were you the one who said three? I want there to be three prongs oh, really? on it. No, was that you? No. No, no. okay. But I remember Miyamoto saying he wished he'd done this, I'm not sure, that maybe just this, you know, you've got uh, this on the left and mm. buttons on the right. He wanted about this on both sides, I think. Like two D-pads? Yeah, two D-pads instead oh, of the yellow interesting. buttons. Interesting. You know, there's the yellow yeah. camera buttons. He, I think he wished he'd gone with the D-pad there rather than... Oh man, it's too late now, but... Well, yeah, it's a bit too late now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? So, okay, so I interrupted you with that erroneous story. So about we that. were working kind of with SGI on mm -hmm. um, basically making the prototype for the N64. But basically we all had these things called, all the programs had indies, which are mm -hmm. sort of this kind of size mm -hmm. uh, SGI machines. And they had these cameras. Um, and that came from an experiment with one of those cameras. I thought it was a, good, a finger that came on. There is. I think you pressed something, but anything about start. <laughs> Uh, there you go. There you go. Anything but star. Yeah. Yeah. What are you and doing? I think, no, I'm. Um, I was trying to freeze. You know the thing where you can freeze. You move it to a point and then freeze it. So I have been told that this is your baby here. Mm. This little stretchy face. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. This is your pretty much your mark main mark on gaming history. Stretchy Mario face. It's gonna be on my gravestone. <laughs> actually interactive, like an interactive Mario face that no, you can stretch face. around. Oh, your actual face. that yeah. you, um, It gets less pliable as it decays, but this was so fun to play with. It's disturbing though, also. And so what were you trying to test when you are doing this? Just deformations? Well, and... you, so with the camera in front of the, that the Indies had, I thought it would be fun to use that to do something. Um, could, we could do whatever we want, work on whatever we wanted in our little group. Mm -hmm. And my little thing was sticking luminous ping pong balls to my face and using the camera to modify a, these bones. There are actually bones inside there. Um, mm -hmm. And then I could sort of do this and make funny faces and it would change Mario's face. Yeah, there was a thing that would make it stick and now I can't do it. Uh, it no, we'll have to leave this for future generations. Maybe they took it out. That would be, that'd be a weird thing to take out, wouldn't it? <laughs> just the part that... Okay, so anyway, Stretchy Mario. The world thanks you for Stretchy uh, Mario. That so was just a test. So it was just a test, and Miyamoto came past my desk one day and said, oh, that looks cool. Can we put that into the, the game? So, we, you know, I made it. Mm -hmm. I gave it a like, little hand and sparkly stuff and, mm -hmm. and made it shiny and stuff. That's awesome. And then somebody, somebody animated it, I think. So you were in a group that was doing R&D, just mm. able to just spend time just doing cool graphic demos and things like that yeah. in SGI. Yeah, and it just happened to be right next to the Mario group. There wasn't that many programmers. It was like five programmers, I think. 
So you officially were in more of a hardware, like exploration team, or? We were trying to figure out what the hardware could do. Mm -hmm. Software side, if you know what I mean. It was fun. Was that fun? Yeah, it was awful. No, it was good. It was, um, it was all sort of totally new. Because we'd gone from a SNES to N64. It was such a huge mm -hmm. jump. Mm. Because you'd actually, you actually had pixels with the N64. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, obviously you had pixels, but you could actually draw sort of anti-alias pixels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That was unheard of. Mm -hmm. and, and transparency and stuff like that. The transparency was a huge uh, thing for the N64. Mm -hmm. Transparency and uh, <laughs> environment mapping and sh stuff like that. Look at you guys, you're like 3D. We're gonna fly, mm. we're gonna fly around everywhere. We're gonna go mm. under that bridge. And Z, uh, Z buffer. I think it was the first console That's to have Z a Z buffer. buffer. For, uh, Z buffer. American audience. Uh, I think the the PlayStation, which was the closest console at the time, only had Z sorting. Mm -hmm. So it would sort the polygons. So you'd have this kind of. So you couldn't have a polygon in. intersecting another right. polygon. Yeah, if you had a big polygon, you'd have to split it up into small polygons. Otherwise, it wouldn't. This is the thing I remember as being it, like the simplest thing. Now that you, no one would think about, it, but it's so groundbreaking. With three, when 3D games came around, people were still figuring out how would you navigate a space in 3D? Mm. And a lot of the games, including some people, did silly things like tank controls, right. which is, of course, ridiculous. Tank you controls. You never do that today. Tank controls, you go left, right, forward, back, Tomb Raider, uh, right, yeah. and uh, Resident Evil. Um, some great games were made that way. But, right, but that, I think Miyamoto spent the most time on the controls and the camera with this game. I mean, yeah. he literally spent months and months just tweaking. Because you never had to worry about that kind of stuff before. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden, it's like, well, where do you where do you push? You know, if the screen if the camera angle changes, and then it seems mm. so small, but in this game, you just you push in the direction, and he runs in that direction. Mm. And I think younger people will not understand why that was so crazy. Right. Because at right. the time, it was just it was not it was not that simple. I mean, I mean you, you don't the fact even... that you have to recalculate what direction you're going in based right. on where the camera is is was totally. Well, this, I, think, I feel like you... this game invented it, right? I, I think so, I think yeah. it invented lots of things here actually, yeah. like things like uh, when you say you run right. Um, you don't. Mario's just all, not always just sitting in the front, the center of the screen. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, yeah, and that's kind of thing you don't really notice. But he, what's he doing? It's basically the camera um, looks. It leads it a little way. bit to show so, you. So where you can he's... see where you where you're going basically. Yeah. And there's there's lots of little tweaks like that that take ages to figure out or discover basically, because there was no there was no 3D platformer yeah. games. There wasn't. You fit, you're one. figuring it all here. Uh, well, I remember there was uh, lots of problems with the camera going through scenery. And Don't tell me about it. That was. I mean, not on this game. Can you make him go through scenery? I just jumped from a tree to a tree. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, see, mean, the, like, see the trees? Go behind the tree? Yep. And now, they're, see the billboards? Um, oh, they are billboards, huh? Um, that camera was, facing polys. That, that was another big. That, I think that they did that for speed. Yeah. Because. God, I've never noticed that. That's why he goes in front of it here. Yeah. But he seems to get embedded in it sometimes. I'm just imagining that. Am I thinking of a... Go, go down. I think you do it at some point, don't you? Well, maybe I you don't. I remember getting kind of just buried in the leaves in the trees. I'm just imagining it. <laughs> this makes me so happy to play this. I mean, I, I, was, I love this game, and it was so crazy. It was just so... In the early days of 3D, I feel like there was a magic to experiencing 3D that um, it's hard to... to understand now because you're so used to everything mm. being 3D but just the fact that you could see something from once after after painting everything in sprites doing everything in sprites and then repainting painting it was a big deal on Monkey Island like should we have four directional walks or eight directional walks mm. so expensive and luxurious to have eight directional walks and now you're like all directional walks mm. and just seeing something from multiple sides was kind of this crazy weird magical feeling that I don't think anyone has anymore when they see 3D right, right. and this is this is the right there at, still at that time when it was still crazy to imagine um, you, it just made it feel like I'm really in a place. Kind of like, I think it's the way VR feels for people now, almost. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is almost as crazy as VR is now today, where you feel like, oh my God, I'm in a, I'm in a weird, real living place, not mm -hmm. something someone painted for me. I remember that a lot of people were skeptical that they'd be, be, be able to recreate, uh, you know, a tight platformer mm -hmm. in 3D just because of those sort of, those analog controls. I mean, you could, you know, on a platform, it's pixel perfect, mm -hmm. isn't it, the collision? Frame by frame, like, what was happening? And, and the good players obviously use that. 
but with this kind of thing, you, there's, you know, it's so you, you've got infinite possibilities of where you could be standing, basically. Mm -hmm. So it, there were a lot of skeptics saying, you know, you can't make a Mario game in 3D. And who's sorry now? They, do they all call to apologize for saying that? No, I don't think they do. No, they don't. They just disappear. No, I should go in this castle. Them. And this is also, okay, and you guys made a big deal of the camera as a, as a character. As a thing, yeah. How did that but I think that was me? Miyamoto, again, um, trying to reinforce the fact that it wasn't just this, uh, it wasn't invisible, it was an actual camera that was, the reason it was moving around was because this little guy was Mm -hmm. Putting it around. I think he mm -hmm. wanted to convey that that mm -hmm. thing because he just felt like a disembodied dis character was like, is it like who's watching me? Like who? Well, I think maybe it was because sometimes the camera does its own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it moves around, and you kind of think, well, why is it? Why did it? Is it because if the it camera does that? anything bad, you won't get mad at the camera because the camera's a cute little guy in a cloud. Well, the thing is, like, oh, he doesn't look very trouble. happy though, does he? Well, he's a, yeah, he's, he's he's a cameraman. Cameramen are usually pretty grumpy. Also, if the camera was moving like that, then yeah, you'd be, you'd be sick. Here's a weird thing. There's the camera, but we're seeing it from this point of view. So this is a lie. That camera's not the camera. Yeah, yeah. Or it's just another guy. It's a There's another guy in a in a cloud that never gets seen. Oh, this is where we learn about the. Um, I don't. The what did buttons. he just say? I don't. Yeah, I think he said to, how to, he was telling you how to do how to do this. Okay, open. Yes, I love that. Oh my god, I get so happy when I see that little iris. I love this game because like a lot of games, a lot of platformers have more of an abstract um, moving from pod to pod kind of, um, mm. you know, go, going from level to level kind of feeling. And this game was like, you're in a place, yep. you're in a castle and it's a real castle. And I feel like to me, like one of the highlights of it was just the first time you go into the basement of the castle mm. and find that crazy world down there. But here, oh, Toad, hi. I think this kind of, of introduced the concept of like a, a safe zone. Obviously, because you can't die here, you can't get injured. Mm -hmm. And the music makes me happy. Do you? Does this bring back happy memories for you, or does it bring back some sort of crazy crunch mode that was? It just no. Well, it kind of does actually a bit. <laughs> I, I think I blocked this music out actually because it was. I've heard it non-stop for so it's long. It's just white noise to you, right? Yeah. So while the team was building the levels, how are the levels like designed and built on this game? Did they have teams? Like one team working on all of them, or did they have like split up level teams? It was, it was a tiny team. I can't remember how many uh, actual members it was, but compared with nowadays, it's, it's like, tiny. How, what's tiny? Like 20 Ten people? people? 10 people? Yeah, something like what, that. What made the whole game? I think basically, I was trying to think how many. There's maybe 10, 15. Yeah. Um, you know, half, half artists, half programmers, and then like a director, producer, huh. planner. So it's, you, it's usually the, the director, planner, uh, they call them planners. Um, they, they make the maps mm -hmm. and they put the objects down in the world. I think they had a little letter to, to put them down. Oh, the exciting thing about 3D games brought in our first experience of camera problems. But your camera handled that pretty well. It just figures out, did you work on the camera good? No. No, there was, there was one guy working on it for basically the entire, entirety of it. Yeah. And he was inventing how cameras behave. Because we have big debates on virtual camera versus physical camera, right? And I don't know if that's... I mean, you can see it try, try to follow the scenery sometimes. I, don't know, I think it's ignoring that bridge, but... Oh, I see. If you, if you get it to go inside, it will never go inside a wall. Just for a second. Just for a bit. Or it will try not to go inside a wall. <laughs> Um, and I but, think, and I, I think that's so. That's why it's important to have that character with the camera on the stick because um, it explains why it acts weird. It explains why it can't go through walls because that obviously that guy with the stick can't go through walls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think they had lots of philosophical conversations about what the camera is and what mm -hmm. what it represents and what you're looking at, sort of thing. I think nowadays you you don't even think about the camera. It's, mm -hmm. it's so generic nowadays. He's gonna kill me. Oh god, look at my health. He's gonna kill you. I'm not gonna. Di oh, He's, he actually dies. Mm. He doesn't just get tired. You get crosses in the eyes, don't you? 
That uh, wiggly picture frame I remember from the old C the old Silicon SGI demos yeah, before yeah. this console came out. And when I saw it, I was like, "Hey, that's that old, mm. that's that old demo." The wiggly um, it wasn't a painting. That was, uh, so that turned into wave race basically. <laughs> that that technique of of having a wave mesh a mesh that you you fiddle with the vertices and they and the, that propagates out that um, you know that turned into wave race eventually. When I say it turned into, I mean the guy that was working on Wave Race sort of saw that demo and said, "Oh, well, we could turn that into actual waves <laughs> and stuff." We could do water. There's a silver Mario, isn't there? Yeah, later. I think that's the last special Mario we get in this game. You get that all heavy. That's so when you come back out of the castle, kind of. That's everybody had a silver. We had a um, silver character in 1080. Uh, we had a that we had a bug in Psychonauts that would make him silver, and I really wanted to put it in the game because he looks so cool. I'm just gonna die again. You had a, a bug, as in a software bug or a bug bug. No, the software bug. Just his, his, like, turned he turned silver. all yeah, he turned all chrome. How does that? How do you make a bug that does that? I don't know. I don't know. Programmers, they can do anything. When it comes to bugs, we we can do the um, impossible. How'd you end up in Japan? Um. Uh, how did we end up here? Star Fox. How'd you end up at Nintendo? Star Fox. Had you made that outside of Nintendo? Or that no, was... we made it inside Nintendo. So we were doing, I was doing um, 3D stuff in the UK on Amigas. They were working on a new Famicom, which was going to become the Super Famicom. And we said if we made a little chip to speed 3D up, you'd get really good 3D. Mm -hmm. It's called a DSP. You'd had DSP chips back then, mm -hmm. which basically helped. On the cartridge. On the cartridge, they'd help the CPU do calculations. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, anyway, so we designed a chip for them that was the Super Mario chip. It's called the Super FX chip when we were making it there. Super FX, was that, what games did use that? Actually, that's the other way around. We called it the Super Mario chip. They changed the name to Super FX. Wait, what was that? What games used that chip? A lot of them are. Um, uh, Star Fox, which is the first one. And there are other non 3D games uh, like Yoshi. Was that Yoshi Island? Uh, he used it to draw sprites. I thought I could sneak up and just kill him before the boss fight started, but you, no, they thought of that. They thought of everything. So, how, how long did this game take to make? This game, yeah. You know. Not 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 long, about a year maybe. Ten people for a year. I guess that was about the time, yeah. I mean, games were a lot quicker to make back then. <laughs> yeah. Don't we made it. we made 1080 in nine months. So see you later. That was an easy boss fight. Oh, that's not the end of it, is it? I think throwing them off the wall is smarter. I'll jump over them. I don't think I know this move yet in the game. They teach that later, don't they? Oh, I can't do it. Oh, no. I think you just found a bug. <laughs> you just went through them, didn't you? I, uh, I did. Maybe it's not too late for a patch. So you, you watched speedruns of this game? Because I found that to be a terrifying experience, watching someone speedrun your game. No, there was some guy that had managed to complete it within like 10 seconds or something yeah. stupid like that. Like, well, I saw the one, no, that was that was on the SNES, the one where he kind of reprograms the game by placing things. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, actually reprograms it by using bugs in the game. Mm -hmm. He just places so items in certain places and then makes memory, like, read from the wrong yeah. place. And yeah, that is that is so extreme. That was the most, that was mind-boggling. But that wasn't this game, but I'm sure... Like we watch them speed run Psychonauts, and it's it's not like just running the game fast. It's like they're, bugs they're like it. I can get around this trigger volume, and yeah. I can skip this whole level. And I just can imagine uh, Miyamoto playing this on his banjo. You I know? think it was actually him doing this. What do you mean? Playing? Did he play this music? What? Really? No. I would believe that. You can tell me any story about those days in Miyamoto, and I'll believe it. Right, I'm going to make some up then. Tell me a story about working with Miwano. Nightmare. He's no, he he's um, very interesting to work with because you never know what he's going to do, or rather, he'll ask you to make something and you don't really know why he's asked you to make it. 
but then that leads on to something else that is the thing that he actually wants to get done, if you see what I mean. And is it that he doesn't know at the time, or he knows but he just sometimes doesn't want to explain it? Sometimes then? he does know, and a lot of times he doesn't know, but he always gets gets to where he's going, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's a technique that Nintendo do a lot, is experiment, experiment with things until something sticks. Mm -hmm. And they're not afraid to just throw your entire things away. I think nowadays programmers, um, they, they like having sort of the specs written down on a piece of paper before oh, yeah. they touch, touch any oh, yeah. code. No programmers are going to watch this, right? Yeah, they do. They like having it. And they don't like when you have to throw it away or, or yeah. not but use it. But back in or... these days, there, there's no spec for, uh, for any of these games. There's no, there's no document saying we're going to have these levels and mm -hmm. this, this is going to do that and all that. I mean, I think I guess that changed when they got really complicated and hard yeah. to make and the schedules got so tight and they got so expensive. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden everything had to count all yeah. the time. Because it's actually quite cheap. It was quite cheap to make a game like this. So yeah, you're saying working with Miyamoto is just like working with me. He was right. locked in his office, moody. I'm just assuming he just, it's just like me. It's, it's not obvious that you're working with a genius, I think. I, I think that's what I tell you guys all the time, right? You're working with a genius, it's just not obvious, because mm. I'm so confused uh, right now. And nobody actually thinks they're working with geniuses, because <laughs> it's not. So what do, you, what do you mean by that? Like you... um, well, like, like for instance, when, you know, when, he make, when he asks you to make something and you don't know why he's asked you to do that, mm -hmm. you try it out and it just doesn't work. Um, and, but that's exactly what he wanted to confirm, whether it would work or not. Mm -hmm. sort of thing. And it is, you, you think it's a waste of time or you think it's not going to lead anything to, to anything. Um, but usually what happens is he's all try it and then get another idea out of seeing that. And that's the idea that actually works. Sort of thing. It's very, I think it's very rare for him to uh, think of something, make it, and then go, oh, okay, we'll, we'll stick with that. Hmm. It's always got at least a couple of iterations before it mm -hmm. oh, sticks. But you didn't do tools for the game, or? Yeah, I think we, d we did all sorts of tools. Um, what were the tools like on this game? Like, they didn't, I mean, you're making the game for the first time, this kind of game for the first time, so how did you even know what tools to make? Well, we, somebody would want something, um, like an artist would say you need... I don't think there's any skinning in this, actually. So I think that was the other part of the Mario Face demo, is we needed, a, we needed to try skinning out. Um, but we, ne we never actually got it into, this, get into the actual game mm -hmm. itself, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Skinning as in... Um, do you know what skinning is? Yeah. <laughs> no, but like... Um... Stretching a texture over uh, the no. mesh? No, okay. Uh, that's when you can see through water? No. No, 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 no. no that's when you can... Uh... Why don't you explain to those people so, so, what right, skinning, so skinning is? Skinning is when you, you have a mesh um, yeah. with bones in it. Yeah. And when you move a bone, the mesh moves with the bone. If you look at his arms, they're just sort of things that are stuck together. They're not... Mm -hmm. They're not joined they're together. They're like rigid looking. Yeah, they're sort of separate objects that do this. So they have to be made so that they can do that without sort of showing holes and gaps in the, between the arms. I can't believe I felt just then. I was so mesmerized by the technical explanation. Um, skinning. What was the first game where you finally got that in? This one. Just oh, you the, mean into the actual game? Yeah. Probably 1080, I think. I trigger this guy and just trying to smush me. Yep. What was the first game that had a band aid on a character to uh, indicate weakness? Oh, I never thought about that. Is that what it's supposed to mean? Yeah. I mean, as I thought, the band aid is like he'd had a previous back injury. Oh, right. He got a fracture from it. Oh, and that's it's showing you what to... And he tried to, he's on the mend, and you need to exploit that to kill him. Is that what it just said on the text? Yeah, all that whole story. Yeah. Oh, the snow one! Okay. We, we have to do, this is my favorite. Except for the haunted house, it was kind of my favorite. Isn't this basically the same as the previous level? <laughs> but with snow? Shh. Maybe. No, 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 no. Whoops. Oh, I was doing a speed run maneuver. Yeah. You're trying to find the glitch. Don't get kicked all the way out of the level? 
Oh my gosh, yeah. the game's over. Yeah, well, that's good. Well, that gosh, nice. that was fast. I didn't think I would beat it so quickly, but I guess it's done. Can I find the yeah. thing? Find the thing. Oh shit. Not that. That's We know that's not there. That's the one place. Mr. Shrinky, you're going to find this stretchy thing? Mm, it's bugging me. <laughs> Oh, maybe it's it's going to be one of these, isn't it? Oh, no, it's the camera. Oh, that's Siri. Siri. No, I Can you ask Siri what, you want to try how Siri? to... Yeah. How would you just explain that? Siri, how do I make Mario 64's stretchy face stick in place? She knows everything. Hmm, let me think. Here's what I found on the web for how do I make Mario 64 is that your face stick in place. <laughs> <laughs> Mario's face on the Mario wiki. This part you can't cut because I think it builds a lot of tension. Will they do it or will they not? I don't think I'm going to do it. Maybe I just imagined it. No, it happened. You remember it as well? Press A to use the hand. Press B to make Mario's head smaller to keep a previously stretched place piece in that position, hold R and select another piece to change. Oh. Yay! Thank you, Siri. They figured out a whole bunch of different faces. Mm. To make him look like a hillbilly, well, that's just regionalist. To make him look like a pirate, take the left side of his mustache, pull it up as far as possible, then cover his eye. Next, take the other side of his mustache and move it behind his nose, just until his nose is covering up all his mustache Except okay. the bottom. Finally, pull his hat down until you cannot see his left eye. Okay. Oh, wow. To make Mario look fat, pull his mouth halfway down, then pull his ears behind his back, pull his cheeks to the left diagonally, and his I cheeks... I think I've got the hillbilly. <laughs> or the, like, snaggletooth baby. To make him look like he's wearing sunglasses. To make Mario look like a tomato. How do you make the tomato tomato for English people? Well, is that it? That's it. I mean, it they like aren't all gold, but there's a lot of people writing about how to mod and enjoy your major contribution to the game. Right. This mm -hmm. is your legacy right it's here. It's funny, whenever somebody... Probably that in the chip with the... Whenever anybody introduced me to somebody at work, by people at work, when they introduce me to somebody, they say, this is Giles, he made Mario face. <laughs> how do you feel about that? Well, I've done other things. I've made other games. There's a chip. No, but you know, I've made other games. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. You must get that with, with Fandango and things. You know, this is Tim, yeah. Tim Moss's face who's, who made Fandango. Yeah. But you yeah. go, well, I've made other things. Do you not yeah. get that? Yeah. Well, mm, I mean, it's obviously something that's brought so much pleasure to so many people. It made right. such an impact on them. Right. Well, I, I suppose it's a bit like the face thing, isn't it? Oh, I was talking about the face. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, it, makes, it, it makes you happy, doesn't it? So Now I feel bad that we talk so much about the face when you're, you're feeling it's like you're... Do, do you want to do one for 1080? Did you like 1080? Uh -huh. I can talk for hours about 1080. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if it's uh, as appropriate to Psychonauts is the only thing. Wow, oh, you really? made him look crazy. So you want them at work to say... Hey, have you met Giles? He's a guy that made 1080. Well, no, no, because then it's That's just... it. No, I want... Hi, we're here with Double Fine uh, Devs Play. We're here with Giles, made 1080. And other games. And... Oh, oh. Star Fox. I, I, <laughs> it's the first 3D game in the world. I... Was that the... Okay, so this is a funny story. So we made Brutal Legend. You played Brutal Legend? Yeah. yeah. You're just saying that. So, uh, Lemmy from uh, Motorhead was Lemmy. in Lemmy, oh yeah. Yeah, Lemmy. And after the recording session, we got to go to his house. All right. And, and did he um, have women there? He didn't, at the time, uh, didn't, no. But he was, uh, Braveheart was on the TV. He had been watching Braveheart. Oh, uh, yeah. It was still running. And, and then in his bedroom, he had a GameCube and he was playing Star Fox. Let me. I think it was Star Fox Assault. Maybe, yeah. yeah, but let me love Star let Fox. Let me played Star Fox. He like, loved Star Fox. He loved Star Fox? Yeah. Wow. Let me, just make a, games. On, let me just make a face for that. <laughs> Can you make uh, Mario into Lemmy? I'm going to make Lemmy plain Star Fox face. <laughs> Hang on.
I think he was. I think he was playing 1080. Now that I think about it. It, it would have if that was no it was Star Fox. What year was that? That would have been. It was. I mean, it was. It was, was not a new Fox? console when I saw. I mean, he had an old console that he was playing. Hey Siri. <laughs> you can't talk to her when she's in my pants. <laughs> what? That's hey just Siri. Rude. That's just rude. <laughs> hey Siri. Why isn't she not? Hey Tim. <laughs> But anyway, so this is Lemmy playing Star Fox. <laughs> There's something obscene about that. Sorry, Lemmy. <laughs> I think Lemmy would be honored. Do you think he's watched one of these videos? I think, yeah, I'm definitely sure he's watching this one. He's definitely going to watch this one. Mm -hmm. But um, thank you, Giles, creator of uh, 1080. Uh, yeah. And Star also Fox. Star Fox and, and a few other games. And a few other games. Mm. And Mario Face. And Mario Face. And well, after all that, Mario Face. By the face. way, I, I also did the Mario Face. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it was awesome. Well, thanks for playing the game. Oh, thanks I hope me. you uh, get a chance to start second off too. When we yeah. finish that, it's yeah. going to be good. A little while. Oh, okay. good. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. It's going to be good. So. Um, when, when will that be? 2018. Wow. We can always dub that later if that doesn't. I mean, that's going to be. That's Why don't you do all amazing. of them? Two, you could say that again in 2017, 2016. And then, that, then with Lemmy the... recording, he's like, Play Brutal Legend is coming out in 2008. And then we're like, Why don't you just say coming out soon? <laughs> <laughs>